my next guest today is a gentleman by the name of Paul Jacobs. And Paul is a um, international medium. He is a spiritualist and he's had uh, many, many years in, in the church of, of working with spiritualism and has been a tutor at the world renowned um, Arthur Finley College. And so without any further ado, I would like to introduce, please, Mr. Paul Jacobs. Thank you very much, Lorraine. Um, it's always a pleasure to have an opportunity like this, to be able to share my knowledge, my understanding, and my experiences of development of mediumship, and also working with the communication and uh, with spirits people to bring that evidence and um, help and support in people's grief and physical loss of the loved ones. But even beyond that, it's the greater message beyond that message of that personal contact of the philosophy and the understanding, the greater message behind the message that the spirit is eternal, that we do not have to die to be spirit, we're spirit here and there. We do not have to die to be in the spirit world because this is another aspect of the spirit world. So there is no separation. It's all part of the stupendous whole and just certainly different levels of awareness and consciousness. And I very much, after 35 years, still have the same conviction, the same joy and, you know, aspire to still be able to inspire other people, touch other people, reach other people, change people's lives, because that's what meaning should do. It should bring a change in people's life where they do not look at life again in the same way. I've been a spiritualist for 35 years. Spiritualism is a religion, um, and we have to look actually, spiritualism is a religion, a philosophy, and also um, supposedly a science as well. I think that what we have today, and this is why I spent many years working in the churches as a religion, most of my work is outside of churches now, even though I still partake in church services, because a lot of people today are turning away from formal religion. And you see, I believe we can get the philosophy and the teaching of the Spirit across without putting people in a religious box of a religion. Religion is man-made. It is just a vehicle that we can use to get the message and understanding across the people. So I demonstrate to many people outside churches, often to audiences who have never been to a demonstration of mediumship before. And I always remember in the beginning, I said to the spirit world, if I ever become a working medium, I do not wish to travel from church to church, to speaking, demonstrating to the same people week in, week out. I'm happy to stand on a street corner. I want to go to places uh, where people will come who would not normally enter the church. In my early years, I caused a lot of problems and controversy within the religion because I was giving demonstrations in nightclubs and restaurants and, you know, people said, Paul, you're, you know, a big name in our movement and it doesn't look right that you're demonstrating in nightclubs. I said, I don't do anything different to what I do when I'm in a church. I still stay true to what I'm about as a spiritualist and as a medium. And, you know, it's touching those new people who would never enter those churches I find the joy in. Today, I specialise more so in developing and teaching mediumship. Because, you know, I, I honestly feel from the days I came into this, the development, the training and the standard is not what it used to be. Sometimes people find me quite a disciplined, strict teacher because it's too loose today. The, the standard seems to have gone down. It's not because there's not the people with the potential, but they're not getting the right development and training. And I know some students first, when they used to other teachers, find it difficult when they first come to me because of the, the discipline that I bring. But if you look at anybody in life, from any walk of life or any aspect, who has a talent, as a gift, you look at those who succeeded, they would have reached the top. 
they will teach about the men, speak about the mentor who gave them that strictness and that discipline, which was sometimes difficult. But if we're going to reach a full potential, then there has to be that discipline within the training and the commitment and the dedication. Anybody who reaches the top in anything always has to apply those three aspects and mediumship is no different. So I'm happy having this time with you, um, you know, to share what I have. I'm quite happy to go along with whatever questions you may feel that your, you know, your viewers or your listeners um, would like to listen to that maybe can give them some insight in their own understanding and journey. So it's a pleasure to have this opportunity. Thank you. Oh, and, you know, um, you touched on a few things that I'm going to definitely want to circle back around, but, um, and I, I was already just really quite entranced to what you were talking about with how you used to um, demonstrate in a club and, and that you were really a bit of a rebel in the, in the early days of your spiritualist um, within that church. If someone wasn't familiar with spiritualism, and, and it's true, I agree with you that a lot of people have moved away from the formal teachings of, of church, and perhaps they found it too, too strict. If someone was not familiar with what uh, spiritualism, spiritualism is, how would, you, how would you be able to explain that? So... Um... If I look at the new people I reach in, in demonstrations, such as in a restaurant or a nightclub um, or in halls or hotels, I always um, give um, a time for a question and answer session. And from those question and answer sessions, I can move their question into the philosophical understanding of spiritualism. In the beginning, you know, a lot of people, you know, who were friends of mine when I first came to this, thought spiritualism was about death and dying. And I said, you've got it wrong. It's, spiritualism isn't about death and dying. It's about life and living. It's bringing and explaining spiritualism and its mediumship is to bring evidences that the spirit can never die, that the spirit is eternal. But the spirit is there within us there's that divine power that divine essence call it god call it whatever label you want no matter what religion you are that spirit is there and that divinity is there within and it is through that communication of that evidence of the spirit to bring that awakening of the reality of the spirit within them now not wait until they die but to be able to awaken that power, to understand and strengthen that power of the spirit, to be able to be lived and expressed within their own life. There were words um, I love by Aristotle, and he said, do not exhort a man to man's thoughts, but inspire him to the highest thing that is within him, that's something divine. Because once we can find that reality of that something divine and that power within, and the knowledge of that is eternal, and it still exists once we physically die, that power can make a difference to this earthly life. It becomes a reality. We can, it can move us. It can direct us. It can, it can uphold us through all things and experiences. And I know that for a fact because it's done it for me. So if it can do it for me, it can do it for everybody else. And if we look at the world today, I wrote a book um, 2000, sorry, in the year 2000, and the spirit world um, gave me information when I sat on New Year's Eve, and they said, we've now come to the end of the materialistic age, which we've had for the last 2000 years, and they we're now entering the new spiritual age. And that if man does not turn back to the spirit, we will see destruction throughout this physical world. This was in 2000. And they said we will see the collapse of worldwide global businesses. We'll see the collapse of financial institutions. Uh, we'll see collapse 
of even some of the world religions. We'll see collapses of countries, and this will continue until man wakes again to the reality of what they are, because that's the reality of us, the spirit within, because that never dies. Actually, the, phys the physical is actually an illusion. You know, quantum physics, that's what they teach. And, and that's true, that's what medium should teach. The spirit is the reality. So, you know, this world or us as individuals are never gonna change for the better unless we allow that spirit to become that reality. And that's what we are and the way we live it within this world and life. So I'm not bothered whether people go to church every week. I don't care what religion anybody is. I don't care what name they want to give to an icon figure, whether it's Jesus, Buddha, whoever. Um, I don't care what label they want to carry. The most important thing is, is finding the reality and touching that power of the divine that's there within us, that there in a way, making a relationship with it, being a part of who and what you are in all that you are and in all that you do. And using that power, it doesn't matter whether you're a businessman, whether you're a medium, whether you're a doctor, a teacher, it doesn't matter. As long as you're using that divinity of that power to do the best that you can with that spiritual intent within it and the power of that spirit within it. That's the message. That's what it's all about, really. Um, and the more people can wake up to that, then we'll find the harmony, the balance, the peace, and in a way, manifest heaven on earth and not have to wait to die to find heaven. That's what it's really about. And each of us have got something to offer because there's something divine within us. There's that perfection that's there. So, you know, if we all have this quality, it may be as a musician, it may be as a businessman, it may be in the medical profession, it may be as a medium, one's no greater and less than the other. If we could all play a greater part with the power of the spirit behind it in every walk of life, wow, what a change, what a difference we could make to the world. And that's all I want to get across and bring that reality. But in a way, I have to encourage people that have got to discover that for themselves. So by touching somebody's soul through the communication, sending them hopefully on a search to find that reality within themselves. I can say it in words, I might inspire them to go on that search, but I cannot find it for them. That's something they've got to do themselves as an individual. So in a way, when you're talking about how you're working with mediumship, you're you're helping to perhaps awaken an individual to, to a greater or deeper aspect of life. You, you mentioned this world being an illusion. So it, it, it sounds like through mediumship, you are allowing people or helping people to come to the greater understanding of who they are as a, as a, as a person. That's right. So we have to find that reality of ourselves. So what we've got to look at is, First of all, we are this physical body, in case of this physical body, um, which we um, discard when we physically die. But that's not the end. Beyond the physical body, we have more subtle bodies. The next body is what we call the etheric body, which is a replic replica of the physical without the aging and the uh, disease. Then um, when we discard this physical body, we move into the next level of consciousness, which we call the etheric world, which is a replica of the physical world. So when we move to that etheric world, that world is as real and solid to us as this one is to you and me. And as we progress in being able to live um, and understand and have that relationship with that divinity, we gradually, in a way, um, we will discard those other bodies, okay, until we become, um, become lighter, more subtle, until we become pure soul. We'll have no shape or form, but we still have individuality. So, you see, the physical body is the vehicle of the soul, and the soul is the vehicle of the spirit. The soul individualizes that divinity and that power. And the soul comes to this earth 
to individualize and express in an individual way that divine power of the spirit within. And if we could really understand the qualities and that power that's within our soul of the spirit, then we would find that we could then move forward in our life in a more fulfilling way. But it's being able to understand your own power, understand what will satisfy your soul in its expression. If I look at all the people who've come to me for private sittings over the years, all the thousands and thousands of the messages, everybody's life, everybody's problem in life is the same. Everyone. So, what is that problem? So I'll tell you now. The circumstances may be different, but they are not. They are not satisfied. Okay, um, with what they have in life. It may be because of their work. It may be because of their marriage. It may be because of their family. It may be because of their home. It may be because of their financial. They're not living what their soul needs to express. And. Um, you know, so I can often say to them, look, this is the quality, this is the potential your soul has. Does that resonate with you? Oh, yes, that, 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 that feels good, that sounds good. Let me give you an example. I remember a young man, he was only about 17, 18, coming for a private sitting. And I said to him, I said, uh, oh, you're moving home and job and uh, moving to another part, a different part of Switzerland altogether. Yes. You're starting a new job in an off small office? Yes. I said to you, you're making a big mistake. He said, oh, please don't say that. My father has set it all up for me. I said, that's why it's a mistake. It's what your father wants for you, but it's not what your soul wants. I said, looking at your soul, you should be looking at going into either social welfare, welfare psychology. And he said to me, I've often thought I would like to do something like that. I said, don't you understand? That's your soul telling you what you need to do to be fulfilled. So you've got two choices now. Do what your father wants and go through life unfilled or do what your soul needs to do and feel fulfilled. It's your choice, yeah? So, you know, but most people are scared to live. They're scared of making a mistake. There's no mistakes. Life is simply an experience. You know, I wouldn't take away one experience I've had in life, the good, the bad, or the indifferent, because it's brought me to this very point that I'm at now. For any one of those experiences lesser, I wouldn't be who I am now, sitting here with you. And it's in those experiences, in all their glory, that's brought me to this point I have. Yes, I might regret one or two of them in one way. Oh, I hope I never have to go through that again. But, you know, even, even you know, sometimes I enjoy and embrace the negative experiences I go through. Because when I come through them and deal with them, and I deal with them in a positive, in a um, constructive way, I find I see a change takes place within me. That seems to move me onto another level of awareness and consciousness which, you know, um, I wouldn't have had happen if I hadn't gone through those experiences. So you see, you know, the soul is, is that vehicle of the reality of that spirit. The spirit is no shape or form. A lot of people speak about the spirit and the soul as being the same thing, and they're not. They're part of each other. The spirit is that divine power. The soul gives it individuality. The soul is the vehicle of the divine power of the spirit, the emotion, and the higher mind, the higher consciousness. Because when we physically die, the spirit world is a world of mind. So mind survives physical death as well. So there must be not just the physical consciousness of the mind, there has to be this higher consciousness, which is there and part of the soul within the power of the spirit and the emotion. And that's what we take with us when we move and move to that other level of consciousness beyond this physical existence. So what I'm hearing you saying, I really like the way that you're describing consciousness and how your consciousness has in fact evolved through difficult experiences. And 
it it really sounds to me like you're sort of stating that although those experiences may have been difficult and i'm saying this for others too that are may be having challenges at this particular time in their life but it's the way that you um perhaps encountered or allowed yourself to to work through those difficult experiences that allowed you to connect with i guess more depth of your of your soul or altered your deepened your awareness and is that what you feel challenges in life are meant to represent yes so if, if i go back to the beginning of my this journey of this journey okay i was basically um on a self-destruct button button i was basically on the floor and couldn't get any lower i've got nothing left of this physical aspect of life that um uh, could bring a change to make a difference the only thing i got left to turn to was the spirit within so in a way i was forced through life physical life's experiences to turn to the only thing that there was even though i had no understanding of it was that spirit within it brought an awakening within me because just in a natural process which we find a lot of people have done was ask about people's stories where they've been on that self-destruct and basically there's nowhere else to go you'll find many of them in some way in a natural way because there's nowhere else to go they actually went in deep within them and they broke that awakening that that god part that divinity that power within that brought an, an awakening that made us realize that there's something more beyond this physical and then that power then was able to sustain us and when i go through my journey of life and those experiences it seems as if that power of that spirit within me becomes stronger my my, my trust my awareness of it um, becomes even more so and that's why now i know whatever comes my way it doesn't mean that i won't find it difficult but i know i have the strength and power to overcome and come come through all things that this world and this life will offer me i feel that that's a really good reminder for for people to be able to have for them to trust that they're going to be able to get through difficult experiences um I, that actually is very very powerful uh to to hear and so and it speaks about your own personal experience of, of awakening but i know that others are going to be able to relate to that uh very well also could so i just you, you sorry could i just interrupt can i just mention all because yeah. you may have a number of people who will listen to this who grieving yes so what i want to, to say to people you know because sometimes i feel um, some mediums can come a little bit complacent about people's grief and, and loss okay so what we've got to realize that no medium can take away another person's grief okay? What we've got to realize also that in a way grief never goes away it'll be there uh, forever what we can do is be able to find that relationship and knowledge and that strength of the power so that power can sustain us that will overcome the negative of the grief that's affected our physical life but the grief will still be there that's uh and i guess I, I believe that that's true that when we have loss that we can't ever really make that loss go away it's always going to be there but we're just able to to continue on and and find perhaps a deeper strength within us yes, you mentioned the story paul you you mentioned the story about the soul speaking to that individual where you said oh that's not what you're meant to do you're meant to do something else. That's your soul speaking to you. So help me understand how someone's soul might be speaking to them or the or the qualities that need to be expressed or, or how does one go about having an understanding of that? Well, first of all, you, you need to learn to, to be able to sit and move, move your mind uh, and change your consciousness in moving into your own 
soul and awakening that power, your emotions, and in a way, not in your conscious mind, in your head, but through your feelings, understand the power of you, the past, the present, and the potential. It's all there within your soul. And, you know, there'll be even often when we're not consciously trying to do that, but we've all got that inner voice, that silent, still voice that speaks to us. There's that intuition. That is our soul speaking to us. And all of us have experienced in one way, particularly those of you who are mothers, you just know with your child instinctively, yeah, and that's something wrong or something's going on. How many times have you thought, you've just, in, in a way, just know you need to pick up the telephone to that person. Many of times, no, I shouldn't go there. Yeah? Um, no, I need to go there. You see, if we learn that silent voice and that power, and we can respond to it, it can help us as an individual and then help us with other people's lives as there. It's all there for us, you understand? Um, you know, so, you know, I, I do do a meditative uh, practice to take people into their own soul, um, a structure, but then it's something they've got to do personally and then in individually but i can give them a structure to be able to sort of like try to begin the process of that awareness within um, their own soul you know it, it's important and you know and also if, if you look you know god's got no hands or feet yeah so you know if you're praying for something okay um you're praying to god for help in something right well the only way that prayer can be answered because because often it needs some sort of physical input to answer that prayer. Well, God can't do that, all right? So what this divine power, call, I call him God because it's the universal world people understand. I'm not talking about an individual person, all right? So, so what needs to be is that that divine power, this God power, needs to be able to move you to the person or the place that can help you or move a person into your path who is the person that can help you with that prayer. Well, that sounds to me like you're saying that God puts people or places in our lives to help us and in response to our prayer. Yeah, if we can respond to that in a voice, we can respond. You know, I mean, if you think, I would have never done this. I was fortunate, okay, and I believe it was meant to be, that I met the most uh, well-known and respected medium in the world, yeah, and became my friend, okay? And it came through me going into a spiritualist church, didn't know where I was going to, I was just walking past. And it turned out the medium was my great aunt. Then after that, she then telephoned me because I said I was not going any longer, it's not for me. And she says, come with me to the church I'm going to next week and introduce me to the greatest medium, Gordon Higgins. Now, I would not be doing today if that hadn't have happened. So was that coincidence or was it what it's meant to be? Did the power of the spirit move me to that church? I didn't plan to go to that church. I didn't plan to go that day. I didn't know my great aunt was going to be there. I didn't know she knew Gordon Higgins, was friends with Gordon Higgins, so the, one of the best mediums in the world. I didn't know she was going to introduce to me. I didn't know he was going to help me be where I am today. I believe that's what this God or this divine power wanted, but I had to respond to the power for it to happen. I could have not responded to that power. I didn't realise I was responding to that power, but that's what happened. And that's what I believe in. So you're talking about an individual having free will, so the power to respond or choose not to respond, but yet there's still a divine intervention through, through other people, perhaps, through the people that we encounter. That's, that is divine intervention, is it? That's right. That's, right. That's correct. Yeah. Um, so, you know, um, what you've got to look at, you just mentioned free will. Um, a lot of my colleagues disagree with me about free will. 
destiny. Most of my colleagues believe everything is preordained, that is, is, is total destiny. Uh, so I, I can't agree with that because then for me, I, 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 I believe in a loving divine power, okay? Not a destructive negative power, okay? And some of the things some of us experience in life, in the world, I don't believe a loving God would personally create those things. That's been through man's free will, okay? So I, again, there's a man by the name of Andrew Jackson Davis. He's known as the, um, the father of modern day spiritualism, a wonderful um, philosopher and medium. And he wrote the words, free will belongs to the physical. Destiny belongs to the spirit. So I believe that many choices in life are happen through our free will of choice. But I do believe there will be certain things that happen in our physical life if that will happen through that divine intervention, if it's part of fulfilling the destiny of our spirit. But there are then many things that have been purely our free will and choice. So I can understand what you're saying there about the difference between free will and destiny and um, and really spirit's will. So I understand for to, to be able to have the listeners have a, a, a better grasp of that, um, because I do hear people talking about, well, um, I'm, I've got bad luck or I'm destined for failure. I do hear things of, of that nature. So I feel it's very helpful for someone to be able to hear that we we do have free will and we do have the ability to change the course of our life through connecting with our soul and, and spirit. So uh, I thank you for uh, explaining that. Um, it's, it's like if, if I do, look, do a reading where I'm looking at somebody's um, qualities, what their soul can manifest to feel fulfilled, I always use the word that is your potential. It is your now individual choice whether you make that a reality. Does that make sense? So it's their personal choice and free will then whether they fulfill and manifest that potential. And often when I do it, um, often after the end, I'll say to them, oh yes, what you're saying really feels right and really feel good, but I can't do it because this, that, and the other. Then I turn around and say to them, well, stop complaining accept your lot in life or have the courage to live and fulfill that what your soul needs to do yeah so you spoke earlier on about how people are afraid to live and so when you speak about courage do you is that how you're connecting it is that a lot of times people actually just are too afraid to make choices They're too scared that, that it's a mistake it doesn't work out and um, society people, friends, religion, government, um, do what we want to live and express doesn't fit with those other things or other people. So we make excuses for it, yeah? And don't go along with it. You know, it's, you know, we're here. Um, personal responsibility is one of our principles. Personal um, responsibility, yeah? I'm here, yes, to live my life and fulfill quality of the expression of the spirit within my soul in my individual way yes so yes i we're here to be of service to help other people touch other people but we're also here to serve and give to our own spirit in its expression as well people put too many excuses too many barriers that are there yeah i love changing life yeah um, and sometimes even, even when the difficult changes because I get bored otherwise, if life's too smooth sometimes. Um, you know, life should be ever moving, ever changing, ever going forward. You know, and so many people just stay so still in one set level of expression, totally unsatisfied with a lot, but haven't got the courage to do anything about it. I see that. Uh, I, I really connect with that, with that description there. Um, so thank you for taking the time to to be able to to talk about that. Um, 
and how we may be held in place with with fear and worries about how other people opinions and all um and not following their own soul see and if you look okay we're, we're speaking about the knowledge and the understanding of eternal life okay so that's difficult for our conscious minds to understand eternity right? but if you look at eternity and this physical earthly existence we have whether you have 10 years or whether you have 100 years this physical journey is like a grain of sand in a desert to eternity. And if we could grasp that concept, I don't think we'd be so scared of living. This earthly experience is just a fragment of our total journey of experience and expression. Such a fragment, but it's hard for us to comprehend that 80, 90, 100 years, 70 or whatever, compared to eternity. And if we could, you know, be more open to that understanding of that uh, uh, eternity and that concept, okay? I don't think we'd make so many difficulties. We wouldn't be so scared of living. We wouldn't be so scared of making what we call mistakes. Yeah. Mm. Now, you talked about the principle of self, of personal responsibility. And I know that that's a spiritual principle. Can, can you also maybe share some other principles that, that may not only define, help us understand the philosophies of spiritualism, but it sounds like there's real guidance in there for people too. Yes, there is. It, it's, you know, um, <clears throat> you know we, we don't teach rigid rules, you know, you know, you have your Ten Commandments and other religions have their structure. We have our seven principles, you know. And you know, even if you look at our first one, which is the fatherhood of God, okay. So, you know, when, when we look at that, okay, and if you look back at the Christian religion and uh, look at um, Buddha's teaching, okay, um, Buddha said, the temple of heaven is within. Jesus said, my father and I are one. So if you look at the fatherhood of God and what I've said to you about going within your own soul, your own temple, and then that divinity, that God force, that God power within, that is the creator that has given you this physical life, then that's your father. So you are one. You are not separate from this God. You are actually, in the wonderful words of Sir George Trevelyan, a modern day philosopher um, and writer, um, he, he, he said the words, and I heard him speak these words, so I never forgot them. He said, each of us is a droplet of God. And I extended that and said, if you look at the vast oceans of this world, it's taken every single drop of rain to make them as mighty. And if we take this world of you and me, you take out one drop of you or me, and this world wouldn't be as great and as mighty as it is. And each drop is as important as the next. One is no greater and one is no lesser. Yeah. So when we go from that fatherhood, which automatically moves on to our next principle, the brotherhood of man. So if it is that divine power, that that God that, that's within us, that is making you and me one as God, then it means then we are related to every other single living thing. So in turn, that makes us all brothers and sisters. As simple as that. And again, if we could live by that fatherhood and relationship and oneness with God and in turn acknowledge and respect that every other living thing and that's whether it's a human being whether it's an animal whether it's our planet with the same respect and love and relationship that's there within our own individuality together as one and that's where we make this stupendous whole of life and creation of this power of life and of love. 
Well, that sounds very beautiful. And that brings me back to something else that you said when you talked about when we arrive at a certain state that that becomes heaven on earth. And the way that you describe that, if we would only sort of be aware that we are all in a way related to one another that does become a place of heaven and on earth doesn't it so you know, it's like the kingdom of heaven is within you know you know um and so it's so we don't shouldn't have to wait whether to 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 find the kingdom of heaven and in a way when we leave this physical world depending on what we've lived and expressed it may be more like hell than heaven when we discard this physical body. Not that heaven and hell are places, they are states of being, states of mind on what we've lived and created through our actions, our words, our thoughts and our feelings. So again, you know, and this journey never ends. You know, we're never going to get to a state of perfection of expression in this short time we have in this physical world. It's a continual journey and progression. Yeah? And I believe, you see, some people teach within the, in these fields that we're here to perfect the spirit. I disagree with that. If that spirit is that something divine, that godliness, then the perfection is already there. It's been able to express that divinity and perfection and within our thoughts, action, words, and deeds. And none of us will do that perfectly, you know. Um, you know, we have to admit that it's not possible. But we have the opportunity, you know, another principle, eternal progression open to every human soul. Yeah. And also another one, which is compensation and retribution um, for all good and evil deeds done on earth. So, and I mean, your idea of heaven might be my hell. My idea of heaven might be your hell, yeah? So a heaven and hell will be a state of being by what we've lived and expressed. But then whatever we've created in that state of being, we're not condemned to, to eternity. Again, we continue our journey, being able to grow in that expression of that divinity and that divine power within us. And then our world and consciousness, consciousness will keep moving and keep changing. And we've talked a lot about consciousness and, and that evolvement. And I know you touched about uh, the, a philosopher that spoke about man's need to return to spirit. And we are living in a really significant time of change at, presently. And do you feel that this is a force back to spirit or how would you how would you be able to maybe you said that there's no separation between the physical and the spiritual world how would we be better understand what's occurring right now yeah yeah the physical and the spirit world are part of each other and what man's done for the last two thousand years they've put the emphasis totally on their physical aspects feeding by greed control power you know over people and um, maybe the way we've treated the animal kingdom, the way we've keep taking away from our planet. And if we just keep taking physically from each other, from our planet and all its living form, yeah, we keep taking and taking, all we're going to create factory, but there's going to be a reach a point where there's no more taking. There's just going to be a simple collapse and destru destruction. So we're only going to stop this taking to feed one's physical satisfaction, okay? Um, for, it, you know, um, if we're not going to do, you know, we're going to see a lot more devastation in the world, um, you know, until man finds the reality, that understanding, we cannot keep taking for our own satin, for satisfying our own physical needs, whether that's for power or material gains, um, doesn't matter which, okay? You know, if we keep on doing that, uh, there's nothing left. So if we want the devastation and the negative that the world's experiencing to stop, the only way is, is to realise it's time to feed the spirit. And there's more to our existence and our being than what um, we, we um, focus on from the physical 
aspects of life, whether that's its pleasures, its material goods, or the power and control. Yeah, we, we, we've got to realize that we've got to start to live in with those spiritual qualities in harmony with each other, the animal kingdom and the planet, then turning back to the spirit, allowing the spirit to become the more the reality, as I said. Okay. Um, um, and this is what I said earlier, then you'll find then a consciousness change and we move beyond this just selfishness, this greed of just satisfying our own personal physical needs. Yeah? Because at the end of the day, when you go to the spirit world, you can't take your Rolls Royce with you. You can't take your mansion with you. You know, uh, mansion, you can't take your money with you. Um, all you can take with you are your memories and that's what you've lived and expressed positively negatively and that just actually touched me because um it, to me it speaks about really living for the purpose of making these memories then living for the purpose of of having something to 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 have and have in memory to uh -huh. So that really, that really speaks to me very much. That's right. If, if I, no. if, if a lot of people when they come back from the spirit world, one of the things they often come back with is regret. If I, if I'd have only done this, if I hadn't have done that, and the one thing I want to do when I go to the spirit world is I don't want to look back on my earthly life with regret. You know? I want to live life. To the full, full, fullest I possibly can, and to the best I possibly can. Doesn't mean I'm perfect. Doesn't mean I get don't get things if you want wrong or make mistakes. But I don't want to come back with regrets. Yeah, I I can understand that. So help me um, understand that if someone wanted to say they were in a, a period of transition, they really felt that they wanted to be able to make this change or to have this this deepening awareness of of their soul and of spirit if they wanted to shift their from that material focus to more of a spiritual focus how might you best be able to give an advice around that okay um, i can only give you just now with what told me i'm in a short summary first of all you need to do what we call self-awareness really honestly knowing and understanding yourself with no blinkers look at yourself in its true glory the positive the negative the in between yeah and then look at what is the negative aspect that we can either change to a more positive maybe some of the negative aspects we have to there's nothing we can do about it and have to accept it's part of who we are you know, release and let go of things that have happened in the past that we can't change and alter and stop them having that negative effect on us. But also importantly, which we can also not be good at, is to truly be able to recognise that which is good within us and also recognise that what we've done of good there within us. So you then you're embracing the positive positiveness to overpower the negative but my biggest thing and you know um, some people might think i'm a little bit head in the clouds or whatever but i know the reality of this and i know very much so did my mentor gordon higginson okay is that for me it is being able to really touch and awaken that god part and make it my best friend have a relationship with that power not just living it in a love and light way. I share with that God part of me everything I'm doing in my life. I let that power know, or that divine intelligence know today that I'm doing this with you today. When I'm anywhere, whatever I'm doing, even in the material aspects of my life, I let it know. I let that power, I let my, my spirit, not just my conscious mind, to experience and feel what I'm experiencing, you know? And I know if we can have that self-awareness first, 
and then that awaken and really have that reality, that power and a relationship. If we can do those two things, it doesn't matter whether you want to be a medium or not. If you do, it will help your mediumship if you do those two things, but you don't have to be a medium. As I said, it can be through that then you can find your way to give your soul fulfillment. Yeah. It, again, like I said earlier, then allowing that power to move you to help you as an individual in your own life and expression, be able to move you to help and touch and make a difference to other people in different ways. That's what it's all about. I can remember quite often, I often go for a, a pint of beer at uh, um, an English pub um, on my own for drinks, which I, I, I quite like to do. And you can guarantee a stranger always comes and stands with me or sits with me, never met before. And you can guarantee, not knowing who I am, what I do, they start speaking to me about their problems or their grief. Guaranteed, every time. Yeah. So I'm there, the spirit will know I'm there, or this divine power know I'm there, and then the spirit then is maybe just touching them. They might not realise that's what's happening, to speak to me, to open up to me. Can you, can you say yes. Well, it sounds to me like you're saying people are drawn to, they sense that, or a spirit's guided them to you to, 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 to yeah. allow themselves to be touched or shared. And um, I know that uh, that's probably true of many people that are mediums or empathics, that they'll say that people are just drawn to them like, um, like a moth to a flame. So that's very interesting that you're able to, to share that experience too. Well, well, if if, sorry, if people could do those two things I just said, we could we wouldn't need mediums. We could make all mediums redundant then. We wouldn't need them because they've got that direct access themselves for that power to help them give the answers they need. Yeah? Give them that direction, give them the strength to make that next step. We wouldn't need mediums. And this is the purpose. And sometimes I feel this is where mediumship is failing because we, you know. We're not through that, giving that communication and contact, we're not bringing that awakening within the soul of the individuals we're touching. And then mediumship won't fulfill its true purpose unless we have that effect on an individual. So. I see. Okay. So it, when you're describing the true purpose of mediumship, if you could just sort of like really bring that home, what, what do you feel the true purpose of mediumship is then? Okay, so yes, I love to help people in their grief. Um, I like to help people um, on a psychic level um, with the difficulties and direction with life. Um, yes, through the mediumistic healing power, I like to help people with their health. Um, but they are, they, but also, yes, it gives people help in that way. But for me, it's also a tool to be able to then move them to the next stage to bring the awakening of the reality of their own spirit. You know, that's, that's what it's about. That's what it's really about for me. You know, okay, because if a medium does that, a person can't look at life the same. They can start maybe then starting to realise what's important in life, what's not, being able to get things into perspective, and be able to then to start living in a way that's more satisfying to their soul, um, so it feels content. That's what that's what we need, you know. That's what it's about. I'm not, you know. Yes, we can just give people help in a short time, in a short way, um, to over their grief. Yes, we might can maybe help a little bit with their health conditions. Um, yes, we can maybe help them a little bit with their problems. But that isn't the full purpose of mediumship and what we should be doing. It's that next stage we need to move people to. That's the real importance. I appreciate you taking the time to explain that, Paul. Um, and, and as I'm wrapping up our, our chat together, and I, I really wanted to be able to say thank you once more for, for just this opportunity, because you've, you've really helped to even expand my own awareness. And so I'm really very grateful to have this discussion. Tell me, if someone wanted to be able to find you, Paul, where can someone find you? Where can someone contact you? Or you mentioned a book. What, um, how might someone be able to connect with you? Okay. 
Um, so there's uh, my me, uh, my website mediumpauljacobs.com. Um, um, you can contact me through there. Um, there's a um, 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 Facebook page, um, Spiritual uh, Medium Paul Jacobs. Um, um, so on Facebook, um, email address uh, paulmartinjacobs at icloud.com. I'd like to thank you uh, once more, Paul. I um, really, uh, it's been very, very interesting and knowledgeable speaking with you with so many, many years working as a medium of spiritualism and, um, and as you said, having that Gordon Higgison as your mentor. So I know that you bring a, just a wealth um, of experience and I thank you for the opportunity to be able to, to talk to you about that. It, it really has been a, a great pleasure. It's my pleasure and I enjoyed even after 35 years having a short moment like this because I could, I could speak to you all my long if you know. Um, I never get tired of speaking about all the different aspects of it. Well then maybe that leaves it open to have you have you uh, talk some more in future so I, can, well, I know you have a wealth yeah. uh, to be able to share. So um, once more Paul I'd like to say thank you very much. Um, it's been a pleasure and um, I wish you very many blessings and thank you for being of service to spirit. My pleasure. God bless and thank you for the invitation. I've enjoyed the experience with you. Thank you. God bless, Paul. Bye for now.